So it's my pleasure to welcome Matt Popplewell, who has, how, when did we start working together? 2004, August. All oh, right, so quite a long time, yeah. And, and Matt's been uh, doing an MD, doing lots of research, in, primarily in the Basel II trial, and now he's going to answer the question, why do we need Basel II trial, Matt? Uh, thank you, Professor, and thank you for asking me to talk on uh, this unusually sunny day in Birmingham. Um, so people say, well, why do we need the Basel II trial when it's obvious, really, that endovascular treatment is the best strategy for almost everybody with critical limb ischemia secondary to infopatillar disease? Well, I thought we'd have a look at the evidence for bypass and angioplasty together and also in comparison to see if we can answer this question of whether we actually need the trial or not. When we looked at plain balloon angioplasty, um, around two years ago, there was a systematic review and meta-analysis that was published, and it showed a really good primary technical success of around 89%. So that's a really nice angiogram at the end of the procedure. Everybody feels good. Actually, when you go out to 12 months, the outcomes were reported as suboptimal by the authors, and that was mainly because of a mortality and a major amputation rate of around 15%, a relatively low primary patency of 63%, and a quite high reintervention rate of 18%, so nearly one in five patients within a year having a second reintervention. Uh, people will argue, well, plain balloon angioplasty, certainly in some parts of Europe, is no longer the standard of care, and that drug eluting technology is taking its place. So we'll look at some evidence about surrounding drug eluting technology. There was a recent Bayesian meta network meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials that was published. And that compared infrapopliteal drug eluting stents, drug coated balloons, plain balloon angioplasty, and bare metal stents. And the results found that infrapopliteal drug eluting stents were associated with significantly lower rates of restenosis and amputation when compared to bare metal stents, and improved wound healing when compared to plain balloon and drug coated balloon. Drug eluting stents also demonstrated significantly reduced amputation rates when compared to drug coated balloon alone. So all this seemed rather positive. When Cochrane did a very, um, they did one of their systematic reviews, specifically looking at all of drug eluting technology, they found that there was a benefit seen in anatomical endpoints, specifically with primary patency, reduced binary restenosis, and improved rates of TLR. However, this did not translate into a clinical benefit in terms of amputation-free survival, quality of life, or cost-effectiveness. So some conflicting information. What about bypass versus angioplasty? And that's what we're really interested in with the trial. A recent systematic review that was only published two weeks ago in the Journal of Vascular Surgery looked at over 8,000 patients with critical limb ischemia. And what they found was there was broadly similar clinically based outcomes between the two groups. Vein bypass did have superior patency. And as we know, prosthetic bypass had decreased limb salvage when compared to vein bypass, specifically in the infrapopliteal segment. Again, there was a dem demonstrated improved anatomical out outcomes with drug eluting technology. So there was a patency advantage of drug eluting stents over bare metal stents. But the main caveat in the trial was actually it was really difficult to compare all these patients because of heterogeneity and also because of a lack of standardized anatomic and limb severity scoring systems. So we went back and looked at our own data from the original Basel trial. So out of the 452 patients that were randomized, 104 patients had an infrapopliteal procedure. Half of them had plain balloon angioplasty and half of them vein bypass only. So we didn't look at the prosthetics within this group. They were excluded. This has been excuse me, recently published in the European Journal of Vascular Surgery. And what we found was actually, although it wasn't significant, at around three years, there was a 22% survival advantage in favor of vein bypass with a consistent effect in favor of vein bypass over plain balloon angioplasty when we looked at overall survival. And this trend was apparent again for amputation-free survival, which was the primary outcome of the trial. Again, it didn't meet, meet statistical significance, but there was a trend towards vein bypass as being the superior treatment option. Most interestingly from the study, we found that the vein bypass actually had a significantly improved relief of ischemic rest pain that was quicker and more sustained than patients having plain balloon angioplasty, and this was highly significant. A similar trend was seen in terms of time to wound healing. Again, this wasn't significant, but the direction of effect was consistently favoring a vein bypass strategy. 
Again, one could argue that the Basel trial, the original one, is, is outdated now, some of the, it's over 10 years old, mm -hmm. and that we're much better at doing angioplasty. Our technical outcomes are much better, and if it were to be repeated with more modern techniques and drug eluting technology, that the result might be different. So based on this argument, we went back again and we took those 48 patients who'd had intraoperative or plain balloon angioplasty in Basel, Basel 1 and compared them with a more contemporary cohort of patients from our own institution. So we looked at 74 patients who were having consecutive intraoperative or plain balloon angioplasty with no drug eluting technology used between 2009 and 2014. And there were significant differences between the groups. So the patients in Basel had more diabetes, more occlusions, um, and also had more concurrent SFA disease when compared to the more modern cohort, which is, was surprising. And technical success certainly improved. So technical success in Basel was around 73%, and that improved to 91% in the contemporary cohort. So again, nice angiograms at the end of the procedure. But did this correlate to improved outcomes? Well, no. Um, there was no differences between the two groups in amputation-free survival or overall survival. So we, we got our stats guys to have a look at all the data, mainly from the infrapopoteal group in Basel 1. And uh, Professor Deeks, this is a, a direct quote pulled from our paper that says that well, while the Basel 1 results do not meet the standard criteria for statistical significance, the direction of the effect consistently favors bypass. And the confidence intervals rule out the possibility of clinically important effects in favor of plain balloon angioplasty. We thought that was really interesting. So are these results replicable in other studies? Well, a group in London of two years ago published a paper of propensity matched patients. So they adjusted for differences in diabetes and chronic kidney disease and found 125 patients who had infrapopoteal uh, bypass with vein and 125 that had infrapopoteal angioplasty. And they demonstrated significantly improved patency and amputation-free survival in the bypass group, which, which is kind of in concordance with what we found and also a very similar overall limb salvage between the two groups. However, again, one might expect the overall complications, which were around 20%, and the length of hospital stay were worse in the bypass group, which, which correlates with data that we've seen before. So why Basel II? I think I've demonstrated there, there there's little evidence really to support endovascular intervention as the preferred treatment for critical limb ischemia in patients who are fit enough to have a vein bypass and have a good conduit. I think the data that we have shown shows that endovascular treatment is unlikely to be better and should usually be reserved for those people who cannot have a vein bypass. Thank you.